<laughs> so, um, the lady you're looking at here with the word normal beside her, her name is Shirley. And uh, we came across Shirley because um, in, in, in our printers in London, in Clerkenwell, we work with a printing company called Metro, and a lot of photographers use them. And uh, we were down in their basement trying to print something. And, um, and the printer said, pass me the Shirley. And we said, who's Shirley? You know, we looked around, there was no, nobody there. And Shirley turned out to be the little thing that they used to check the skin tones um, of the prints. And we did a bit of research and we discovered that Shirley was actually the first woman that Kodak, Kodak photographed in order to you know, create a kind of benchmark for white Caucasian skin. And this image of this woman, and she was an employee of, um, of Kodak, Eastman Kodak. Uh, this portrait was then distributed across America and used as a, a fine example of perfectly white skin. And uh, we, we actually found, after she after that became a bit of a date, they photographed another woman and then another. But they, they continued to just call her Shirley, I think. The name stuck. Um, you can see here, through Shirley's through the, through the ages. Um, and we, we kind of started to look, we became very interested in the history of film and its relationship to skin tone and colour. Um, because it's actually a very political and very problematic area. Um, and we discovered that after, in America, after the end of um, segregation, there was this problem. Suddenly you had white children and black children in the same classes, and to do a, a photograph of, of a class was impossible. The skin tone was, you could, ex, you could um, expose your photograph for the black child, or you could expose it for the white child, but you couldn't expose it for both of them. And that's because film had been developed uh, with this uh, prevalence on white skin. And um, it was only later, after two of Kodak's biggest clients, the confectionery industry and the uh, furniture industry, complained that they were unable to photograph chocolate and wood products um, <laughs> accurately. And Kodak responded to that by developing a film that became known as Kodak Gold. And when they first produced this film, uh, this, this type of film, they marketed it as a um, film that was good for photographing the details of the dark horse in low light. That was their kind of shroud of code. Um, but it was actually Jean-Luc Godard who, who drew this to the world's attention. He was invited by Samora Michel, who was the Marxist leader of um, Mozambique, who had just taken over in the 70s. And Mozambique didn't have a television station, so he invited Godard, Jean Rouge, and Ray Guerra, so three of the most radical <coughs> filmmakers of the time. And he said, we don't need to follow a Western model, let's reinvent the notion of, of, of television. And Godard famously said, I refuse to use Kodak because it's, it's racist. And he insisted on using video. And so we kind of took that as a cue. And at the same time, we were inviting on one of those very odd um, commissions which we, we get every now and then, which is, come to Gabon and document it. You know. And so, you know, we've, we've changed a German hospital vehicle from World War II into an off-road vehicle where we can go to the pygmies and photograph these rare rituals and bring your 19th century camera. In. What we did instead is we went on the internet and found all the film that Godard would term racist, so all unexposed film that predated the Kodak Gold that Ali was talking about. And we took only that film, and we did get in the ambulance, and we did go to the end of the rainforest, primary rainforest, and we did go to a very rare pygmy ritual, and we used only that film. And we brought it back, and we had to find somebody who could process it. And there was only one man who used to work at Boots Chemist, and he got all these kind of old ladies and men bringing in this film from the 70s and saying, could you develop this? And he saw a kind of little gap in the market. And he would slowly accumulate chemicals and when he had enough film, he would process it, so we had to wait months. And he phoned up and he said, I've got terrible news. Only one picture's come out. And we shot 40 rolls of it. And, um, and this is the picture. And the reason it's so, um, so magenta is that apparently green is the pigment that's, that kind of sustains itself and everything else loses things. So it turns out they, it so happens that this palm is placed in the middle of the 3T ritual. So 
you know, there was, we were kind of slightly led off the hot kind of commission as well, not really. Um, but it was more kind of meditation on, on, on how could film, how could a kind of material inhabit a political space and, and that for that to have a, a moral and a political position just as a material itself.